Hello, I'm Dean Martin with Transmission Digest. Welcome to the Transstar Industry Studios here at Babcock's Media. Welcome back to CVT Part 2. Uh, we finished up with the reverse clutch, and again, these are just normal frictions and steels. The uh, piston, you have to get a, a bar to go across to compress the spring uh, to take it out, put it in. Also, there are some thrust bearings. Uh, there are several uh, bearings that are the same type. Just make sure that they go back in correctly. Uh, one thing I do want to mention about the sensors, as I said, there are three sensors. They're all the same. Just uh, for the sake of argument, make sure you mark them, put them back in the right uh, position. We're going to now take the back end of this apart, meaning the two variators are going to come out with the end cover. So we'll flip this up. You might imagine it's, uh, it's not light, but we're going to go ahead and Okay, and you got the hammer. Do you want me to aim the back cover over? Go ahead and tap, tap back on the, uh, okay, give me your screwdriver. Again, you want to be uh, a little careful when you take this apart and hit on the back side there. And the CVT-8 is a little bit different on reassembly because of uh, a couple of blue tubes we're going to show. And right here. And as you can see, and hit it over there. Okay, now tip it back just a little bit. My, my way. There we go. There. Now, one thing I wanted to show you, on reassembly, this is a little bit different than the others because you have two lubrication tubes and you have tube extensions that go into the, uh, into the chain guides. But as you can see, with the end cover out of the way, there's really not much left here. But these are kind of unique to the CVT-8. Now, normally, you could take the uh, bolts, the attaching bolts off the back cover and pull these out um, so you have the two variators and the uh, chain. Um, or you can literally use this as a stand and take this apart on the cover itself. Uh, one thing you have to watch, not all these nuts are right-handed thread. This one happens to be a left-handed thread. And what we're going to do is to disassemble this now. Go ahead and pull the uh, bearing. Um, you have a press fit of the gear and the bearing, and this is where pullers are going to come in. And where's your little... Put a pilot there. Now, the, the puller that Anthony has... Uh, it's made by PosiLock. Uh, Transfer actually carries these. Uh, they're really handy as far as uh, taking apart things such as CVT variators as well as pulling them back so that they relax to be able to pull the chain. Now, the okay, go ahead and pull the screw back up. One word on the uh, gear has a little step, make sure it goes back on the right way. Okay, once the gear and the bearing are out of the way, you can now use the puller to go around the variator itself. This is going to pull it back, but also pull the uh, center part off. And what it's doing right now is relaxing the spring tension. As you can see, it has a pretty good press. Um, any of these pulleys that are difficult, you can also uh, put a little bit of heat onto the center to make the uh, retainer pop out. Okay. 
Okay. Now on the the driven the driven variator actually has three rollers to keep the uh, uh, variator locked to the shaft. Make sure these rollers are reinstalled uh, correctly and don't lose them. Anthony, you want to go ahead and disassemble this, put this on the press and take this apart. And these are the bolts that actually have O-rings that you definitely want to uh, change when you rebuild the unit. And there's three on each variator. And what I wanted to bring your attention to are the lube tube extensions. And these are what make it difficult to put it back together because these extensions go onto the lube tubes that we showed you on the case and that's why uh, you just can't load this on put it onto the case like you would another type uh, you literally have to put this on have the cover off to put these tubes in and the tubes have to be rotated correctly so the narrow part of these tubes face inward they're actually locked to the uh, to the tubes that bolt to the case so this is somewhat unique this has a drive chain unlike most CVTs which have a push belt and the uh, the fit of the bearings are such that you don't want to get them cocked when you take them apart so uh, when you pull these out, make sure that uh, they come out evenly or you, you could have an issue with them. On the back cover, you have a ceiling ring and you also have a steel spacer. And again, you can see the uh, output speed sensor. And as I said, this uh, transmission uses a drive chain instead of a push belt. And they do this for capacity because this transmission goes on higher uh, higher capacity engines. If you work on a CVT, it actually has a push belt. This is what you're going to work with. So whether you have a drive chain or a push belt, the outcome is still the same. You have to be able to relax the spring tension on the uh, driven pulley. But before you do that, put two nylon straps onto the push belt to keep it together because if you take this apart, the steel rings here can come off and then you have 400 little pieces of metal. So, and if you're working with a push belt type, before you do anything, put two nylon straps on, then you're not going to have a problem. Again, on this chain, you have guides. These are plastic guides. Uh, be careful with them because they can get brittle and break. But this is uh, what those lube tubes go through. So that's what makes the CVT-8 somewhat different from, um, from the other models. You have a normal bearing that's on the front side of the driven. Replace that if necessary. And this is the drive variator. You have a rear bearing. You also have a front bearing. Uh, these front bearings are, tend to go bad. And unlike the uh, driven pulley, which has a spring in it, the drive pulley doesn't. Pressure is what moves this back and forth to control the ratio from low to high in a CVT. The pressure going to the secondary pulley and the spring tension combined is what keeps a constant pressure on the drive chain or push belt. 
So uh, these are just uh, uh, like any other clutch assembly. Uh, pressure goes in them. They have to have seals. And again, when you take them apart, you have to take the nut off. And on this particular one, uh, sometimes you can literally flip them over on a hard surface and bang them and it will take the bearing off along with the center part of the uh, pulley. All right, Anthony just uh, disassembled the uh, top part of the driven uh, pulley and you have a snap ring and again this is somewhat unique on the CVT-8 and you have a retainer this almost gives you effect like a balance piston on a, on a regular uh, clutch assembly. And oh, this is stationary, but it has a big ceiling ring. And uh, this is made out of a, uh, a good type of material, almost like a Torlon type material. And this is what's pressed onto the shaft. And as you can see, it has a sizable spring, almost like an A500 overdrive. And that's why you use caution and always do this on a press so this doesn't blow apart, take your head off. And then again, you have grooves down inside here for the rollers uh, that I mentioned. Always check the bore to make sure it's not worn and always replace these seals. Okay, we're going to take this apart. As I said, we can sometimes bang this against, uh, against the surface. Uh, we're choosing to uh, use the puller. Again, depending on the press of the bearing as well as the uh, retainer of the variator, you may have to pull the bearing off first. And you also have the uh, hold down bracket. Make sure that this goes installed correctly. This actually goes back into the uh, end cover pockets. So make sure this doesn't get flipped over. This particular model, again, has a uh, tone ring. Make sure you're careful with it. It's made out of beer can. It can be bent easily. When you pull this assembly off, unlike the driven variator, you only have one roller and a guide, and that's all there is. So make sure that you don't lose these. This is what anchors the uh, variator to the shaft. Uh, again, just like with the driven, there's a ceiling ring that goes around here. Always change that. Make sure that the inside of the variator uh, seal surface is good, as well as the surface where the chain rides. And again, if you have to pull this bearing, just like any other bearing, uh, but other than that, uh, you have a couple of bushings uh, in these. Make sure you check the bushing fit because uh, that's what seals pressure. So that is pretty much it. When you reassemble this, like I said, it's better to put the variators into the cover and then drop the cover down into the case, pull the cover off, put these tubes down into the case, and then put the cover back on. Before we pull the valve body, I wanted to show you one thing. There is an O-ring also. Make sure that that O-ring is replaced. Because if you don't, it'll have a, uh, an internal leak. The valve body on this is fairly, uh, fairly common. It's uh, nothing profound about it. I'm just pulling the screen off. Got 10 millimeter. And there is actually a, a little bracket here for the filter. Don't lose the bracket.
One other thing I would, did want to show you, as soon as you pull a bell housing, there is a pin that goes down through the case, and that's what centers, uh, locates the shifter shaft. Do not lose this. Make sure this is put to the side. When you put, before you put the bell housing back on, make sure this is uh, put back into the case. This shift shaft goes all the way down to a lever. And this lever is what engages the manual valve. The electrical connector is also held in to the case by a bobby pin. It's got an O-ring on it, not a big thing. And uh, we're showing uh, during the presentation a uh, photo of the valve body uh, showing what each um, particular solenoid is. You have a couple of pressure switches as well. And when you take off the uh, electrical harness, which is held in by some uh, Allen head screws, this electrical harness also holds pins that retain the solenoids. All of these uh, connectors unplug easily except for the TCC solenoid which you have to pull out to be able to lift this off and then the TCC will unplug from the connector and again you have a photo of this and underneath the um, underneath the uh, connector brackets you have four of these pins to engage the solenoids, these are linear type solenoids. All four of them are the same, but before you take them off, always mark the solenoid for the bore to make sure you don't get them mixed up in case there's a calibration difference between them. Again, we have a photo of this uh, during a presentation. As far as the valve body itself, you split it, you have normal check balls and screens and um, the, the regular things that you would see on any transmission. Uh, solenoid operation is certainly different than what it is on a step type transmission but you do the normal diagnostics determine if one is bad or the pressure switches and um, other than that that is not really uh, anything unique so outside of the variators dealing with the variators doing a CVT not really that much of a problem what do you think Anthony I don't think it's that big of a problem either Mike okay well we hope that this helps um, to demystify uh, what is in a CVT so that if one shows up at your door, you don't chase it away. You can't afford to lose business, uh, especially in this day and age. I'm Mike Riley. I'm Anthony Tosi. Thanks for watching. See you next time. See you.